Hello, my lovely painters. Um, today I am painting uh, Stellar's Jay, which is a bird that I have never seen. So this is from uh, Susan Dudgeon in the Free Reference Photos for Artists Facebook group. And I just fell in love with that image right away. It's The blue is so pretty. Oh. The first thing I do, and I sped this first part up because you really don't want to watch me tracing around the image for as much time as it actually took. But um, I print out, when I'm painting, I print out a copy of the photo and then I tape it to my page and I am using um, what's called Holbein soft tape, also called Nitto tape, and it's tape that's not supposed to tear your paper. And my paper usually doesn't tear, so it's all good. Anyway, I take a ball ballpoint pen and just trace around the main outlines. And in this case, I'm tracing around the bird and then just the one the one branch of the tree that goes um, horizontally there. And so I'm greatly simplifying the outline. There I'm tracing around the tail branch. Just around the claw there. And then once I'm done with that, I will peel off. I'll lift it up to make sure that I have a good transfer that I can see. I can see the transfer marks behind and I'm using Arteza transfer paper which transfers um, pretty dark lines and I know you can't see it but I can see it and it's good enough for me and I'm gonna try in uh, future videos to make the markings a lot darker so that you can see it while I'm working on it okay so now I have my outline I usually tape my the printout of the photo to the top of my easel. Now I'm going to be starting with uh, manganese blue, manganese blue nova from Holbein, which is just a lovely kind of um, almost a turquoisey blue, but very light. And I was going to just do wet on wet, but I forgot, so I'm just painting painting kind of a tea consistency paint. I got a new brush and I already hate it. It doesn't hold a point. So you can see me switch back to my older brushes. Um, I, I really, I really like sable brushes and I use um, Dainayu, Dainayu brand. Uh, Kalinsky hair brushes, they're fairly inexpensive and they are just great brushes. I, I do prefer natural fibers, so if you love rodents, um, Kalinsky is weasels. And I also paint a lot with squirrel brushes. So just putting a first layer down of the manganese blue. And I put a little up on the head because I want I want to scrape some of that off and show I want the blue to show through on the head when I paint in some of the feathers up there. Okay. The next color I'm going to be using is phthalo. And <laughs> phthalo blue is just a gorgeous, very strong kind of a, a cool blue, kind of towards the turquoise again. Very strong. A lot of people hate it, but for this, 
this painting, the color is perfect. So I'm just going around, kind of lightening up some of the spots where I overdid a little. <laughs> and you can see, Thalo isn't in my, in my um, usual palette. So I have it, I have a separate palette of colors that I use occasionally, but not very often. And I just stack them on top of my desktop. And, and here comes the Thalo and I'm um, just, it's still wet. The painting is still wet where I painted the manganese blue. I'm just, um, they call it charging in, but I don't know, I hate techno lingo. I hate artist lingo. So I call it uh, adding paint where it's where there's already wet paint. Um, you get the idea. So I'm just adding some phthalo blue while it's wet. And you can already see just what a vibrant blue that is. Another option for this would be um, do, 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 Prussian blue, which is a similar color, a little, a little more blue, um, and it also the the nice thing about Prussian is that it's a granulating color. Thalo is a very clear staining color, and you don't get the pretty granulation. Of course, I realized after I did this that I could have used salt because salt will give a lovely mottled effect, but I'm just doing it with the brush. I just kind of keep, keep pushing the brush into it a little bit to kind of break it up and make it look like feathers, make it look fluffy. Now I'm just going going down onto the tail feathers. And I'm wetting wetting the areas where I'm gonna paint. And I will be using what am I using? <laughs> oh, if I only had a memory of all the things I miss, I miss my mind the most. Um neutral tint. I'll be using neutral tint, which is which is a, a color that you can use to darken just about any color, but it's a it's a very dark bluish grayish color, and I use it a lot. It's just kind of a nice color when you need a dark a dark blue. You could use indigo or you could use, you know, mix some some ultramarine blue with some black. I don't know. I'm going on the head and I'm just wetting down the the head. And then I'll be picking up <laughs> to switch my palettes around. So I'm looking for my neutral tint, which is on this palette. Second from the right on the bottom, there it is. I'll be I'll be painting in that in the belly too with the neutral tint. You can see I've switched back to one of my Dainayu sable brushes. That and those brushes they are 
They're about $39 for a set of three, and they hold a point beautifully, and they have some, they have a lot of snap. And I just, I'm used to them. I love them. And they don't break the bank. I'm doing around the, the areas of the face and I'm just looking at my reference photo which has where the feathers just go in different directions. I'm trying to be true to the different directions. One thing that really helps when you're painting feathers or fur for that matter, feathers and fur are a lot alike, is to do a lot of layers. Otherwise, it just looks flat. But when you get when you get a lot of layers going, it starts to add depth. And I I didn't I didn't really do that on the head. So later I will go back. I'll go back and take my magic eraser and lighten, and then add more layers. This is my first time through painting this, so, uh, you know, it's a lot of experimenting. I have a big, it's a piece of backing board on my palette that I, I just play with the colors on sometimes when I'm not sure what I'm going to get. So you can see, you can see up there that there's some um, manganese blue and just out of the frame is some believe Prussian blue that I decided not to use. I'm doing a light layer of the neutral tint. There's two different sections of, of feathers down below the branch, so I am painting around one of them, also known as negative painting, which it, negative painting means you're painting around something <laughs> so that it stands out. And I don't know, negative painting, just the whole term, just, it, it makes my brain not able to do it. So I just have to, con I have to tell myself that it's, it means painting around something. <laughs> and there I'm going, doing another layer on the head feathers. I think I dipped in some black, mix some black into the neutral tint. That's my number one Dainayu Kalinsky Sable. That's a very fine, fine brush. So I'm, I'm putting in some fine lines, trying to get that texture, the texture with the lines of the feathers. Just doing the, 
the other feathers. That must be from the other wing. Just going over it and over it a bunch of times with with the fine brush. Oh, is that where I dropped the brush onto the paper? <laughs> and then I made, yeah, I dropped the brush. <laughs> I do that all the time. So I take a tissue and some water, some clean water in the brush, and I scrub over it. And then I take a tissue and lift off where I dropped the brush. taking a palette knife and scraping out some lines, some lines where in the reference photo you can see that the tail feathers kind of come together in there. I use the the palette knife because it was handy. Um, in my first watercolor class, we used we learned to use chunks of credit card cut up, and um, I I can never find those when I need them, but those work really well too. Um, it's funny because my first art teacher didn't like using the palette knife because she said it would gouge the paintings. And then I had another teacher who didn't like using the credit cards and preferred the palette knife because she said the credit cards would gouge the painting. So it's personal preference and it's what you have. And I think the only credit cards I have to use are real actual credit cards and I don't want to show my credit card numbers on the air. So palette knife it is. Now I'm taking um, a stiff little brush. It's just a, it's an inexpensive um, lunar lunar blender. It's called. It's a Princeton Select. It's a nylon brush, eighth inch Princeton Select lunar blender. It's very stiff, and I'm just dabbing dabbing in it the painting to kind of. Um, scuff up the feathers so it looks more like individual feathers. You could also spray it with a, a mister bottle and that would make it a little bit more fluffy looking or you know you can scrub at it with a little scrubber or you can take a magic eraser. There's a lot of ways to um, scruff up, scruff up the paint so it looks fluffy. I'm adding a combination of um, raw umber and black up in the tail feathers because there's a little bit of a brown tint up there.
I only use like five or six colors on the bird. I'm trying to keep it simple. Still mostly using neutral tint with, with a little bit of black on the bottom of the beak. And I, I overdid it a little bit here and then I go back with my scrubber brush lift a little and then I darken it again. But I'm really I'm trying to get some texture and I made it too dark the first round so I, I scrub it up a little bit later. See, my camera is slowly sinking down to where it's cutting off the bottom of the painting. Someday if I make enough videos, I'll, I'll be able to get a really fancy, nice setup. But right now I do it with my camera on a cheap holder that sits above and, and sinks. I have to keep lifting it back up where it belongs and then it slowly sinks down. So now I'm taking some of that <coughs> scrubbing out the, the dark part of the belly there and just kind of dragging the paint up with a stiff brush. Also under the neck. Okay, I might have to get some music in the background here or else just sing in the background. Do, 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 do. <laughs> she finally, get, I'm finally, okay, I'm gonna do the eye, the center of the eye with black. I'm trying to keep it white around the edge and it did a pretty good job of that. More little feathers and you can futz all day with this stuff if you want or you don't have to. You can do what you want, it's your painting. Okay, working on those other feathers. A 
claw. There's the claw that comes around the branch. One thing I, I really have to say about the Thalo Blue is that I don't use it often, but it really does work nicely in this in this painting. And the, <laughs> there I go, scruffing stuff up again. Um, but the Thalo, one thing about Thalo is most paint dries a lot lighter than it starts out when it's wet, and the Thalo stays stays vibrant. So now I'm just kind of scuffing that up a little more. Everything, just do a lot of um, scuffing and scrubbing and whatever it takes to get the feathers to look fluffy. I will also be scrubbing out the edges of the bird because they're a little bit, the feathers kind of stick out on the edges. You can see where they're a little ragged, but I will do that after I put in the background. I'm using a bigger scrubber brush right now. It's, it's also an inexpensive brush. It's a Princeton Select number two fix-it brush. And it's just kind of a medium-sized round scrubber that is really useful for making things look fluffier. Now I put too much paint up there, so I'm gonna mess it up. That's what I do. I put paint on, then I mess it up, and then I kind of went off the edge. But we'll fix we'll fix that later with the background. It's kind of funny that when I got done with the belly of the bird, it, that was the only part wet on the, I paint on a, a block of paper so the, so the paper doesn't buckle too much because the edges are all glued down and that keeps the paper flat. But, but w since I've just painted in kind of a round area, the belly of the bird is wet and it sticks out and looks <laughs> it looks 
very three-dimensional because it is. It, it's all bolted out. Unfortunately, it dries flat, so it's, I don't get to keep that effect. I'm almost done with the first part where I do the bird. Second part, I do a, a background. It's a fairly simple background. See, in this part, I'm not really happy with the head of the bird. It just looks too flat. So, so I'm scrubbing it off. You can see the blue underneath, which is kind of nice. But, but it still looks flat, so I'll mess with it more later. Add a couple more layers. And I am, I am always, I never like my paintings right away because I'm so focused in on them and I can see every stupid little mistake. But usually, if I take a picture of it, you know, and I don't know, half the time when I take a picture of it and post it online, I see the glaring mistakes and then have to go back and fix them anyway. But um, usually, Usually by the next day, I take a look at it or take a look at it from across the room, and it looks pretty good. So almost done with this part. And then I will see you in the next part where we do the branch. And then after that, we'll do the, well, the branch and the background. <laughs>